www.africabusinessradio.com. Find us on Facebook, Africa Business Radio, and on Twitter, Africa Beast Radio. Towards a profitable Africa. Business news. Business resources, economic analysis, market analysis from experts and industry leaders in African enterprise. Get more for a profitable African venture. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa. The prosperity of your venture into Africa is our goal. We are committed to the success of every business in Africa. ABR, towards a profitable Africa. It's a beautiful uh, morning uh, right here in the city of uh, Johannesburg and of course uh, the dial is www.africabusinessradio.com It is Thursday and of course uh, we are interrupting our normal programming to bring you this particular interview this morning and of course uh, what are we talking about this morning? We're talking about uh, climate change and environmental management in Africa and of course uh, we are doing that uh, to the, uh, uh, this morning with uh, the organization that is responsible uh, for uh, uh, they, they are called Pan African Climate Justice Alliance, and of course uh, we are trying to look into what they are doing and how they do what they are doing. Of course, also particularly the uh, the award that they are running currently. And this morning I'll be speaking to Mr. Mike. Uh, I won't make any attempt to pronounce his last name. He's going to help me out with that. Uh, so he's uh, he is with uh, the, uh, the the communication office at uh, the uh, Pan-African uh, Climate Justice Alliance. Just a bit of background, uh, Pan-African, uh, Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance uh, is uh, a continental coalition of civil society organizations and their main goal is to mobilize and empower African civil society to ensure realization of environmental and climate justice for all people on the continent of Africa. And of course, uh, just uh, just to tell you a bit more about uh, who they are, just how they do what they do and what their vision and their mission. But of course, I know Mr. Mike will help me out with more on that. But of course... Um, they do what they do through advocacy. Uh, they also do a lot of capacity building, uh, awareness, creation, research, and partnerships. And I guess uh, in the spirit of partnership, and that is why uh, our two organizations is embarking on uh, on the journey that I won't uh, refer to you as yet. And this morning, like I said, I have uh, Mr. Mike on the line, and he's joining us all the way from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. He's with the Department of Knowledge and Communication of at uh, the Pan African Climate Justice. Good morning, Mr. Mike. Good morning, Mr. Mike. Can you yeah. hear me? Good morning. Uh, we are good. We thank uh, uh, God that things are. How are you this morning? Hello. Um, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Good morning to you again. <laughs> Fine, thank you, sir. Um, we're well up here in Addis. Uh, actually, morning, but the sun is uh, showing its face and it's starting to warm up a bit. Oh yes, I mean we 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 like sun in Africa. And the city of Johannesburg, I swear, the sun is starting to come out gradually, even though it's winter. So I think uh, we all love sun in in, in 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 Africa. Just a bit more about yourself before we talk about Pakja. Well, Pakja, as you did the background there, we are a Pan African organization a civil society that brings together actors in the climate change discourse. Okay. As you would be aware, climate change is a reality. Looking across the continent, we have had a huge hit from a number of effects of the emissions that have contributed to you know, the change of the, the climate patterns in Africa. Hmm. When you look across the continent, we have taken a hit from 
huge floods. Uh, sometimes uh, we have had uh, prolonged droughts, particularly in this region of East Africa. Hmm. The last seven years have been a very difficult period. So Pakja brings together uh, actors in this area to push for the changes that we need, particularly one, create awareness around the issues of climate change, okay. but two, build society to be able to respond to some of these changes. One, to build resilience among people, particularly... Uh, okay. Are you there, Mr. Mike? Okay, yeah, this morning... Uh, <laughs> Uh, network is showing us film this morning. Are you still there? All right. So, um, like you were saying, uh, uh, pa- uh, Pacha, as they are popularly called, uh, Pan African uh, Climate, uh, 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 Pan African Climate, Al- uh, Climate Justice Alliance, as they are popularly called, Pacha. Uh, so they, 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 they do a lot of capacity building with civil society on creating awareness about uh, climate uh, change in Africa. And like you were saying, over the past seven years, there about we have seen cases of uh, flood, cases of drought across different regions in Africa, East Africa uh, particularly, and there were uh, a serious drought even until early this year. And uh, we have seen how that uh, has affected uh, uh, food and crop production you know, within the region, not just uh, one country in the region, but of course also we had uh, uh, Kenya being affected, even Tanzania being affected. Mr. Mike, are you back? All right, so we had uh, a couple of countries being affected, you know, with regards to the drought that, uh, up, I mean, the, yeah, the, the drought within the, uh, 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 the, the the East African region. Also on the Southern African side, uh, we had uh, drought, of course, South Africa also experienced drought. Actually, the past, uh, the last two years, the drought was so severe that uh, it affected crop production and a couple of other, uh, 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 a, couple of, a couple of other farmers were also affected. Uh, Mr. Mike, are you back with us? Hello. Hello. Are you back? All right. Uh, uh, I think I think you down a bit. But yeah, it's up again. Yes. Uh, all right. Also, can, can we pick up from where you stopped? Yes. All right. Uh, let, let, let's 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 pick up from where you stopped. You were talking about uh, a, a series of uh, of drought that we have seen within the East African region, and how that has affected a number of other industries like food production and um, even dairy industry were also affected because of the drought. Yes, uh, some of these effects have adversely, of course, affected um, communities mm. and the families and businesses across the continent. Mm. When when you look at uh, what has happened in the north as well, yeah. and quite recently towards the west of Africa and, of course, the South Africa, look at uh, what is happening to our uh, wild animals and look at the, 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 the forest covers that have been brought down by human activity mm. and that has exposed our our wild animals and of course uh, that has affected livelihoods that's affected jobs that people have had over the years with the, with the, with the diminishing number of uh, wildlife that means then a number of people get out of work hmm. and so we are we are having multiple compound effects hmm. from the climate change effects that are of course partly brought by our own activity but again beyond us the elements uh, once the system is disrupted, hmm. then the, er- the elements react in a different way. Hmm. So Pagja in that sense then puts together the civil society across the continent, helps them to respond to these issues at hmm. a number of levels. Hmm. When we build their capacity to be able to build resilience among communities and among people within their areas of operation. But two, we also build their capacity to engage with governments hmm. at various levels that they can be able to have pro climate changes in uh, in the in their laws and in their policies hmm. and the three that governments can start allocating sufficient funds towards these responses that uh, we can start looking at uh, pro climate friendly policies and practices on the ground hmm. for example that looking at organic farming hmm. that would 
go a long way to produce, of course, nutritious and uh, good food, but also conserve the environment and the soils that are uh, on which we live and operate. Hmm. Now, some of these things are long term that uh, Pardia and its partners have been working over the last 10 years and are looking at in the next 10, 20 years to be able to continue building that capacity. But at the international level, Pacta as well works with partners at various negotiated negotiation levels from the UN all the way to be able to look at some of the agreed um, uh, uh, agreements that have been reached to look at how they can be enforced. And so, and look at even uh, investment and um, funding agencies that are working around issues of climate change. Hmm. And these are some of the that PAGDA involves itself hmm. and has been doing this for the last 10 years. Awesome, awesome. I think you guys deserve uh, a round of hard applause. Let me see if I can just give you guys a round of hard applause right there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I understand that uh, um, we have uh, most African countries as part of uh, the Paris Agreement. And uh, recently, the recent development, when we see the likes of uh, the United States of America pulling out of uh, uh, a Paris Agreement. And also, one will argue that... Uh, Africa, we are not the largest polluter of environment in in terms of uh, uh, carbon emission and all of that. But we have seen the impact, the negative impact of this this, uh, climate change, you know, uh, in different forms and sizes across the continent. So it is very important that we have organizations like you guys. So in terms of capacity building, can you you give us an example of of, uh, of some of the things you do with uh, civil society? in order to, um, to, uh, to, to increase their capacity to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to be able to do what needs to be done? Yes. Um, currently, we, have, we are running eight programs. I'll just pick one of the programs okay. that we are working with civil society across the continent. Hmm. One of these programs is to build the capacity of civil society within the local government to be able to work with governments to improve uh, the climate response. Okay. This program, for instance, in Botswana, which is the hub of the southern uh, cooperation with Pakja, yeah. that brings together the southern African nations within SADC. Hmm. Then we are working with the country in Bos- We are working with an organization in Botswana that brings together the, the, the umbrella organization of Botswana Civil Society Congress that brings together all the civil society within Botswana hmm. and by extension. Uh, represent us at the SADC meetings to be able to or push the regional governments to be to, to start responding to climate change through policy and as well as financial commitments. Hmm. The same is up in the north from Cameroon. We are working with Indigenous Peoples Congress, uh, Repalak, that brings together all the indigenous people across the north of Africa, including the Sahel region, hmm. to be able to conscientize them on their rights and their and, and, and their responsibilities within the environments in which they live. Hmm. But more than that, to be able to sit together with local governments, national governments, to be able to start looking at ways in which they can build resilience around people of the who, who work around those areas and the indigenous people within their forests and the open spaces, particularly the, 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 the semi-arid areas across the Sahel. Hmm. Now, Sahel has quite a number of um, communities living within the Sahel and around the Sahel have been heavily affected. Hmm. So we build their capacity to be able to respond. Hmm. In East Africa, we are working with a number of indigenous communities, civil societies that are living around the forested areas that are also water towers, sources of water to be able to conserve this water uh, sources, rebuild by uh, replanting indigenous trees, Hmm. protecting the soil, to be able to look at the future generations Hmm. that uh, as much as we have benefited and the past has benefited, we have equally contributed to breaking those forests down and the water towers 
and lost sufficient amount of water hmm. that now lead to a number of droughts. So hmm. these are examples of what we are doing at those levels. Hmm. Hmm. Awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, quite an exciting one right there. All right, uh, also talking about partnerships, uh, I understand that you guys have something going on currently for journalists and the fact that it's also important that you build partnership with uh, with the media community because we also need to be able to uh, uh, to uh, amplify and also create awareness around the importance of uh, of uh, climate management, environmental management on the continent of Africa. You're doing all of these amazing things, but I think awareness also needs to be created around all of those and other things that need to be done. So can you tell us what you're currently doing with uh, the media community? Correct. All these things we are doing again cannot be uh, done in isolation. Hmm. The media is uh, an integral part of development. Hmm. And we are looking at the media as an important partner. Hmm. And looking at the development of what we could call the climate science and are things that have grown up recently. Please continue. Yes. That there are things that have grown up recently. Okay. And we are looking at working with the journalists at that level, hmm. building their capacity, but also enhancing the opportunity for them to continue reporting on climate change. Hmm. And so, uh, the last the last eight years, uh, Parkja brought together uh, a, a team to be able to put together a biannual co- uh, competition among journalists reporting on climate change and the environment. Now, this year we are running the fourth edition of the African uh, Climate Change and Environmental Reporting Competition Hmm. that will bring together journalists across Africa to compete on a thematic area. This year, we are looking at changing the narrative on environmental challenges in Africa, the case of pollution. Hmm. And so we're inviting journalists from across the continent to submit articles, to to submit material they may have published and broadcasted over the last 20 years, to put it together and... Uh, send it uh, to Pagja, there is um, a secretariat put it together to look at this and put put this material through a, competi- a competitive process. See who would have reflected uh, some of these challenges we are facing in, uh, in, 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 in a more understandable way that mm. have brought out uh, unique opportunities. Mm. So in this case then, uh, this journalist will have an opportunity to win cash prizes, mm. to get sponsorship particularly to go and attend uh, the UN Climate Change Conference that mm. will happen in, in in Poland this year between the 3rd mm. and 14th of December. Mm. Uh, that will be the first prize. We also have other prizes, cash prizes, and various elements that people will win as part of encouraging their participation in the climate change discourse. Mm. But more than that, mm. journalists participating in this process form part of a larger cog of a group of journalists that will continue training and building capacity and opening opportunities to 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 to, to have discourse with uh, climate change partners climate change um, uh, uh, people within the system hmm. so we'll build their capacity and they form a group of journalists who will be working around this and we offer opportunities to train with us, to work with us in the climate change discourse. Hmm, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right, uh, for for journalists that might be listening or that will listen to uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 this clip later, to this podcast later, um, how can they be part of this uh, of this program that you're running? What is the process of application? They would submit to the applications. Okay. To an email that we will give. It is actually to ASA Awards. ASA. Can you spell that? Yeah. ASA would be A W C E R. Okay. Awards, one word. Okay. At pagja.org. Okay. Pagja.org. Yeah, pagja.org. Okay. They would include a cover page containing the article that was broadcasted and the title and the author's name. Along with the, a short biograph or not, and of course, um, uh, contact details, email address, telephone numbers, a postal address, and possibly a town and a city. Hmm. And also scan a photocopy of uh, the author's identification card or passport and send it as a JPEG. Awesome. That we will be able to share, of course, uh, possibly we'll send you 
a written piece of this that you can be able to share. Awesome, awesome. And uh, when is the uh, the due date for the submission of this uh, of the application? The deadline is thirty first of August. Okay. So the first of August, so we we'll still have a whole month actually. That's just quite, uh, that's quite good. All right, uh, we're gonna try as much as possible to put the word out. I think uh, most of our journalists are very much on the social media, so we're gonna see how much we can push to be able to drive this on our platform within our network. But of course, uh, just one last thing before I go. Um, I mean, a series of uh, more conversation will, 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 will begin to 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 happen on this platform. I believe we, in partnership with you guys to begin to talk about climate economy and climate action, environmental management in Africa. I understand that there's been a huge issue around uh, uh, land use uh, acts across different countries in Africa. Our farmers are demanding for more lands because, uh, uh, b- 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 because of various reasons and all of that. But just one thing I want to talk about is that we also have a uh, high unemployment rate across uh, different countries in Africa. And somebody at said that one of the uh, uh, simplest way of, uh, of creating new jobs or more jobs in Africa in order to bring down unemployment is uh, looking at uh, climate economy. Uh, uh, what would you say about that? It is, it is true. The climate economy is one of the largest, possible largest employers across the continent and even the world. Mm. Looking at what we have gone through as a continent, possibly over the last 50 years, mm. we have degraded our environment and completely, in some cases, mm. obliterated the possibilities of the environment giving back to us. Mm. And we would say the environment is hitting back to us. Mm. But with the new understanding and the growing science around a utilization of land and and adding value to land, hmm. we are looking at a growing economy that will come around agribusiness hmm. for young people, for people out of employment. It is an opportunity to go into green energy areas. Hmm. It's an opportunity to look at uh, what the environment is offering and turning that around hmm. in a sustainable way. Hmm. It opens up huge opportunities. Hmm. And interesting enough, even hmm. the discourse that has been around the climate change, hmm. There are a number of investment opportunities, mm. a number of uh, banks, a number of um, vehicles that have been created yeah. to give around funding and help people to start businesses, to start responding to climate change in unique ways. Mm. These are available, and I believe as we go along, we'll be able to unpackage some of this and bring them easily to, 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 to understanding and to bring people on board to see the opportunities they can take advantage of. Definitely, definitely. All right, Mr. Mike, can you pronounce your last name before I allow you to go? <laughs> your Irish last name. <laughs> my last name is, yes, my last name is of Irish origin, Omaira. Omaira, okay, okay. That sounds really good. The only black uh, Irish man in Kenya. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very (laughs) much for your time. Uh, Like I said, there is more to talk about, and with time, I think uh, we're gonna just uh, plan out. This will be happening uh, almost on a weekly basis and uh, in partnership with you guys. But of course, uh, the podcast for this particular interview will be held tomorrow, and we're also gonna share with you and share with your with your communities and your stakeholders as well. Thank you very much for 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 spending some time with us this morning. Uh, um, any last word? Um, we want to encourage our journalists okay. to look beyond the traditional ways of reporting, hmm. to venture into some of these difficult areas. They have always thought they are difficult areas. They hmm. are not. Hmm. Let them come out. We are ready to hold their hands and walk with them through this process. Thank you so much. Awesome. And we really appreciate your willingness to work with us and are supporting us through this process. Awesome. Thank you very much, Mr. Mike. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. Bye.
All right, uh, that was Mr. Mike uh, Myra. Uh, I hope I got that right. Uh, uh, he's uh, 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 one of the is the communication uh, officer at the uh, PACJA, the, the Pan African Climate Alliance Justice, and of course uh, talking to us about what they do and how they do what they do, and of course also the uh, the uh, what or the program that they are running for journalists. So we just uh, like to encourage our journalists across the continent to uh, to be part of this in initiative so as to uh, join this organization in driving uh, climate action across the continent. But of course, uh, from us, uh, that's where we're going to stop this morning, and we're going to bring you more of this uh, in the subsequent time. Goodbye.